Um, thank you. On the adjustment and error analysis of a current model that's used to that's being used and developed to forecast the grain field in the future. We can go to the next okay. slide. I'm just double checking if the people online can hear. Okay. Um, so these are some. Okay. So these are some uh, graphs from the current model. Um, uh, maybe you can move a little. Yeah, I'm up. gonna try to get yeah. that out of the way for you. Um, so we can't see that on our screen. It's fine. Like though we don't see the little window. Okay. Yeah. Um, so here you have the red line is the uh, predicted model, and then where it uh, turns into the gray dashed lines, that's the forecast, and then you have those screen dots that are the observations. Um, and so the model predicts various things, including the root zone, soil moisture, and canopy cover, which can be used to predict grain yields. Um, and it's a fairly simplified model, and it has uh, these 24 parameters. Um, but the model currently has uh, some issues, including like one-day snow events, like this point and this point are like one day snow events that the model doesn't really There's a point right there. Or stick. <laughs> that the model doesn't really cover. Um, and then when you have uh, either seasons or weeks that are wetter or drier than average, like right up here, the model can't really account for that. So one of the questions is why is that? Like, is that because of the observations that we're taking and the soil, uh, the instrumentation was wrong? Is that because the base data from the model um, is incorrect, or is it because of the equations that we're using in the model? Um, so that's one of the things that um, I'm trying to figure out this summer. Um, can you go to the? Yep. Um, so the first thing that we're going to start doing is using the calibration of these par parameters and instrumentation. So currently, a lot of those green dots, the soil moisture was collected using soil moisture sensors. So I'm going to go out to the field and um, collect some of that uh, soil and oven dry it to see if those sensors are working. Um, and also, and additionally, uh, check the precipitation event. We might have just missed a precipitation event in the um, base data. Um, and then look at some of the existing parameters in the Ashland Bottoms data, including surface level soil depth and um, the upper and lower limit of the plant available water capacity which hopefully will help calibrate the model a little better for the data that we're using. Um, and then we're using about 13 data sets from Kansas and Oklahoma to try to calibrate this model overall. Um, so then what we think is going to happen is that over time, so we, we can predict weekly, right? So if you have measurements that you take weekly, every week you can predict the final grain yields. And when farmers uh, maybe in February or March, they'll put in fertilizer to the soil or, in, or change their managing practices based on what's happened. So what we want to do is we want to see if we can get them to have a better understanding of what their grain yield is going to look like based on past data. So the question is, what does the error in the model look like, right? So we have, this is just an a idea of a diagram that I made. So if we have like our final harvest is here, right? And we want all right, we want to accurately predict the grain yields. So maybe the grain yield, the, the error in the model goes down straight like this. So then if you, your farmer wants to change their inputs, like in February, it doesn't matter really like where they change their inputs, the error will decrease linearly. But if the error decreases in the model like this, if they want to like change their fertilizer like right here and we say, okay, if you wait a week, you'll increase a lot in the accuracy of the model. So if we can figure out what the error in the model is looking like, then we can help um, the farmers make decisions about what to do. That's, that's all. Okay. 